Hi, Daniel. Um, welcome back. Thanks. <laughs> so I think um, I was quite interested to talk about this topic that's come up with both of us this week um, to explore what happens when we release and let go of whether that is physical issues, friendships, work, things that maybe aren't serving us anymore or that we've just grown out of or the energy shifted. So before we go into that zone, what I also uh, wanted to sort of highlight because it, it's linked with this theme as well, is I get the emails from um, the Richard Rudd Gene Key website and they've highlighted that the Gene Key in operation at the moment is number 39 and it's about liberation. Um, so it describes it as dare to liberate yourself through your imagination. Allow your vast dreams to come alive inside you once again. Unblock the pathways that close you down during difficult times in your childhood. Let your heart breathe fresh, free air again. Feel the daring inside of you as you rush, as this rush of new energy courses through your veins. You are divine, the life divine. The divine lives inside of you, in every breath, in every movement. Free up your imagination. Cast aside the cynic or the skeptic inside of you. Open to that childlike wonder as you let your mind soar, as you reach out for the truth, as you pluck it from the heavens, as you call it into you. I like that a lot. That was really profound. Isn't that interesting? Because we were we were talking, weren't we, about how um, sometimes we can experience low energy, uh, tiredness, fatigue, aches and pains, headaches, or all out illnesses, dissatisfaction, anger, all of these, they're all low energy, low frequency states. And we don't necessarily know why we are experiencing that because it's, it's different things for different people. But certainly when we let go of the things that, whether it's a large scale or a small scale, uh, irritations, disruptions, disharmony, um, constantly rehashing of circumstances that just are wearing or we've got to fight our corner. What's interesting in that, because we were talking about trauma a few weeks ago and it still plays out um, and there'll be still things that come up uh, to for us to learn from to get deeper introspection with but what that gene key highlighted for me in that moment and I remember learning this quite a while ago I read a book and it was a seminal book for me and it was called uh, it was about multiple selves and what the author was basically saying is that any of these aspects of ourself that was uh, we couldn't show because through embarrassment or shame or you just couldn't be excited or joyful or happy or any of those things. What happens is the, the idea is, is they get oppressed and locked in the psyche so that what when what initially feels like something very powerful and doesn't feel very nice starts to erupt once we start to pay attention to it, because some things can erupt without, without our control. And it can feel really like so powerful, so engrossing, so gripping, so uh, intense at the time. What we're experiencing though, in that moment feels like that sort of negative space, but we're also releasing the energy that's associated with that way of being or that state of being that child that, that was pinned away. So sometimes the depression sometimes uh, is around those sort of deeper mechanisms that are stored within the body. As you said in the last episode, it's the mind, the body and the spirit. And this is what Richard Rudd's Jinky is referring to, that with that, with that release, with the release of those things comes an intensity, initially an intensity, and then then nothing or then the no man's land or then the what next and that's often where we'll get tripped up but I just wanted to stick with the with the intensity element first 
before we look at what happens when I, I keep getting this image of almost like you're in a cannon and you're fired out the cannon and the intensity behind that. Sometimes that's anger. Sometimes that's rage, indignation, you know, any of those really powerful feelings. And then you land. But it's what's driven it to that point at that time can feel so uh, utterly destroying and pow very powerful and can be really destroying to, to our ca characteristics if we own too much of it and take too much responsibility. But I, you're nodding a lot, so it's something that it looks like you feel is really aligning to some of what you were saying. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, first off, that was a profound statement with the gene key. I'm so grateful that you were able to find that or you came across that today and decided now. to share it. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Um, and for those who don't know, gene key and human design are really both uh, different interpretations on how to understand yourself based on your alignments, how you're born. You know, um, it's like uh, astrology mixed with um, psychology to me in these realms. And it kind of, I always say, if you want to know why you eat spaghetti on Thursday, figure, you know, figure out your gene keys or your human sign, because they yeah. really do go right. that in depth for you. But, um, you it's know, the sort of blueprint almost, it's the idea yeah. that we, we sort of have a blueprint that we're born in. And that if we understand these different keys, so if you imagine a key to a door, basically you've got the key to a door, but initially in order to pass through something, we're passing through the shadow element of that. And every Every key links, it actually links with the I Ching, so it's uh, 64 of these gene keys. And it will mm. have every one of those has a shadow and a gift. And so yeah. we're talking about what happens when you're in the shadow. And then, and a lot of times, you that. know, the reality is in this. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Uh, in this day and age, we are having, um, I've lost my train of thought. Ah, oh, so <laughs> well, we I can't just, help it. Every, yes. every week, Danielle, uh, when we do this, there is always, and I don't want to predict this now and place this as it's always going to happen, but every week something's happened in the moment uh, when we're recording this. And uh, you had a lot of things just spontaneously combust in the background. It was wild. I, yeah <laughs> and I did too and just at the point where we were talking about how sometimes the energy intensifies yeah, yeah. You know, I feel like as we're bringing in this new portion of the subject carrying out the subject that we were just on it's kind of like it's just built this uh built energy up. ball and so everything around us started moving and, intense. and even like my whole electric like my electricity went out and came back on <laughs> it was and the rooster started crowing and the happy birthday song started happening. And <laughs> so, yeah, which fits exactly with what, you know, yeah. is the gene keys because he's talking about liberation, but how do you get liberated is one, you've got to know you, you or your society, your community is oppressed or your feelings are oppressed or all that stuff. So the gene key is about, you know, all this stuff that can be, uh, repressed from childhood or these elements are repressed and once you start to release that in the process of liberation it's like shooting it out of a cannon but it, it intensifies and what we were talking about over the last few weeks we had both started to experience some really intense experiences for things that we have been aware of or that have gotten on before but they ramped up and so what I wanted to emphasize in this episode is sometimes when something feels like it's getting too ramped up, catastrophic crises, all this is happening in that moment level, there is probably a big corner that we we're about to turn around or a step that we're going to take. And I was just in the process of saying to you, you know, this is possibly something that's also relevant because prior to us talking this evening you were saying that all of these things that we because once you start to clear it and you can feel it clearing because you don't feel intense you don't feel like your mind is constantly being assaulted by all these thoughts and you don't feel this constant need to check in on yourself and check 
check up what people are saying or what's going on that dissipates and once that dissipates where are we so I'd, I'd sort of emphasize let's not look at the landing where have you landed but the intensity of the uh, of that process of that and it can it can be a very intense process uh it's kind of like, you know, when you're in the, in a dark tunnel and you can't see the light at the end of it, that's kind of the experiences that when you're about to uncover a massive breakthrough or um, you're about to turn the corner on something you've been working really hard towards, it can feel like uh, the intensity grows inside of it, that the, the, um, almost disillusionment, the, the, am I in this reality? Am I carrying, you know, what's this chaos going? Because it does feel very chaotic when you're doing this. And, and the goal for this really is for you to acknowledge that it's a pattern, right? We are acknowledging that this is a pattern of, of change, of evolvement. And what can I do inside of that pattern of evolvement to keep myself calm as the chaos begins to display? And it could be chaotic in, in, inside of yourself or, you know, in the exterior. Either way, it or typically it, it combines, right? When you feel chaotic inside, you begin to experience chaos around you, or you know, as you're turning that corner, it's always those little signs we talk about: as above, so below; as within, so without. You know, it's it's just a, a mirrored action. And so, these intensities, I I know on a on a personal level that I've just gone through a major shift, and this shift was. I mean, it really did start back in November, really. If I if I go back to that time frame, there was this huge cycle that began in November. And I feel like every time I say we're wrapping up that cycle, something begins to appear that's part of that cycle, right? And so, you know, um, this one was a long time coming. And so for this last week or so, the intensity that of that cannonball being like me being shot out was at an all time high, um, you know, things were coming at me left and right. And if I wasn't in a place to prepare myself as I have been over the last few years to really, you know, upping the ante and, and my self-awareness up in the ante to how I, how I manage myself inside of situations, um, that, that, cannonball could have gone a lot further or it could have gone a lot shorter or it could have not even ended up on the mark it was supposed to or could it just shot at loads of people because the thing is you can be shot out the cannonball but when you're in that chaos sometimes what we end up doing is projecting all of that internal chaos and combustion onto everyone around us where we get completely um you know, we, we can get to the stage of when when we're feeling hardball, because we talked about we can feel like that sometimes, you can end up like decimating the world around you and causing so much havoc and destruction. And because we want to, on a psychological perspective, we want to release the intensity of that feeling, you know, and it's akin to being an absolutely sort of high vibe I don't mean high through illicit drugs, but that high vibe, it's a similar sort of strength of energy. We want to dissipate, we want to release it because it's too much for us to contain, not realizing. And, and when you've got, if you have got things flying at you, if you've got the, the bailiffs knocking on your door, if you've got court coming up, if you've got the housing calling you up or you own money, money and all that, if you've got those external things uh, at you, of course, the reality is, it's going to ramp it up and it's going to ramp your fear up because you're now feeling like you're imprisoned and in a corner or right. it can be your own internal child stuff mm -hmm. that starts to release and that chaos is coming out and it's not to do with those external things right but it can feel as intense where it just um where when you're in it you know it's incredibly sort of empowering as well but when you're in it uh you know you might just feel like you want to just uh I don't know reap hag havoc so to ride it to remain aware and in control or master that experience 
right. knowing that you'll move through it is a yeah. real test. It's important. And it's a, and this is not one of those that you learn over like, overnight. This is a practice. This, this, this really does take practice to get into a zone that even when things feel like they're falling apart in different areas that to recognize that they're always falling, their things feel like they're falling apart, but that doesn't necessarily mean that is what is happening. Yeah. 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 And it might be just clearing the space because you had just spoken about that before all of the, um, <laughs> you know, fun yeah. stuff, all the chaos, and the external stuff was happening that, uh, um, oh, I'm just losing my train of thought. I guess I wasn't meant to say that, but what we're doing at this place is to, we're gaining reserves inside of this learning process. We're gaining the reserves of knowledge, wisdom, understanding, um, patience, and recognizing inside of all of that, that everything has a pattern, everything has a plan. And if you get out of your own way, you'll start to notice that that chaos is much more like the gnat we talk about. It's more of an annoying that. And we don't mean life-changing events. Life-changing events are going to happen. I'm, I, when I'm speaking right now, I just mean, you know, because um, some people can think that like, say, you know, losing a friend is a life-changing event for them or, you know, um, finding well, it's out perspective, that- isn't it? What you told Yeah, about. it's all perspective, right? It's what yeah. is important, what your value system is in that moment. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, we are, we are designed to- have a hard time um, in our physiological body to respond to any type of change. We want normalcy, we crave consistency, but that is not the way this, this life works. We are meant to be up and down. We are meant to work through the traumas, work through the cycles, work through these things, and then come out from it a little more knowledgeable, have that wisdom intact, and then take those, those lessons you just learned and then prepare yourself for the next time that will takes a down, a downturn. And, you know, I think recently I had a really great example of where I am versus where I was. And I got to see it almost in a reflection of myself, because as this person was projecting their chaos, internal chaos onto me, I was in an understanding moment of this isn't me, but that was me at one point when I wasn't taking care of myself, when I was handing too much away, when I wasn't healing from within and my response was, I'm not even going to read this and I love you and I want you to be happy, but you're not projecting your chaos onto me and I'm definitely not going to receive it. And um, to be in that placement, knowing that I could have taken that, I could take in that tasty morsel and used it to my advantage and lost my, you know, lost it on them. Okay. And instead I cho chose to be understanding and not, not even allow that chaos to come in, into my realm and say, I, I, you can't even get past the border. I'm sending you back. And um, that told me right in that moment that that's where I was. And this is where I am. And look at the work I've done to get there. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm not, I can't, you can't even be mad at somebody who's displaying the behaviors you once displayed because you know, that part of their journey, you've been in that part of their journey. You, you've recognized that part of that journey. And so even though my boundaries say you stay over there, my love stays intact because I've done all of that self work during those chaotic moments, as you're about to be shot from the cannon, you know, to prepare myself and say, it's going to get weird. It's going to be a little dark. I might not be able to see my next step in front of me because of the fog, but I trust that I will get through this the way I've gotten through every other chaotic event in my life. I trust in my wisdom and in my intuitive guidance to walk me to the next step safely. And when you can get to that place, that chaotic beginning where you're about to be shot out of that cannon it prepares you mentally, emotionally, and physically to get when you're shot out. Okay, well, maybe I should go into a circle and to protect myself, or maybe it's time I spread, you know, out into a flying position because I want to see how far I can go. And, and knowing that you have the capability to not only learn from your previous times, but to then carry that forward and say, well, I know I'm about to get shot out of the cannon. I can feel it. 
So when I I'm out, when I'm coming out, now I know how to protect certain aspects of, of my well-being inside of that. And sometimes it just comes out of nowhere, right? You don't expect that this stuff is going to happen and it just happens, but you've already built the, those reserves. You filled those cups. You took care of yourself. You know that this world is full of ups and downs. And so this time, instead of losing it and just going all out into an emotional warfare for yourself, you're deciding to well, let's learn from this. What is it that I'm trying to see? What is it that makes the most sense right now? And then keeping that open mind and that clarity forward. And you can really just manage the chaos a lot better. I think what you're indicating to me though, is that this recognition in that when you pay attention enough, there's a couple of things that you highlighted that are really key. One is the honesty that the way that somebody's acting and displaying behavior, you've been there and you've exhibited that and you might have equally caused chaos. And the other element is use the phrase emotional warfare. Mm -hmm. And what happens if we don't take ownership and responsibility for the strength of, because we can all experience that chaos that's so compelling and so overpowering that if we don't recognize that it, it exists within us anyway whether they were there or not they might have just triggered that is then what do we want to do about it and I think we've both said that you know we might feel this intense desire to lash out mm -hmm. to say something to be hurtful because no matter how you know how brilliant not even I, sometimes to be hurtful just to be heard you know well, like I, you hurt my feelings for this reason but those might not even been why your feelings were hurt you're just projecting your insecurities at that point but this yeah but I think there's a sort of point before that because in order to in order to recognize that you're hurt and you want to be heard you've got to be able to recognize as well whether or not they're capable of hearing and do valid that. point yeah valid. yeah but initially Initially, we, if we're triggered, the emotional warfare is you can't be at war if there's only one side fighting. So mm -hmm. if one person is really intense and projecting that towards you, or you feel that you've been really strongly activated, then there's a high probability in a lot of cases that we'll project that towards them. And mm -hmm. in that moment, as I said in previous uh, conversations we've had, is it so intense we want to dissipate it, we want to release it, we want to let it go. But when you realize when you've been down that journey before is that you've passed through that and you know that when it's intense, it won't, everything dissipates, everything goes for a cycle between nothing to something and something to nothing again. But in that moment, even if you love that person, you don't want to harm them in that moment, yeah. you might feel all those things. Then at some stage, it depends, because this is where the trigger can be different for people. If they've been triggered and they are in their, you know, prehistoric brain mm -hmm. and they're in fight or flight, they're not going to be in this front frontal lobe part of the brain where they're able to do what you've just said. Where am I? What's going on? I wonder what's happening. Is it their stuff? Is it my stuff? That kind of thinking just doesn't even occur if they're in that triggered, stressed, trauma state. What happens with the practice of everything we've talked about so far, the practice of being mindful and noticing these things and taking time out, filling up your cup and learning who you are as a person means that you're able, if you are triggered and you go into those states, to first of all, take yourself out of that place, out of that emotional warfare, out of that conversation, pull yourself back and breathe and calm down. And so many yeah. people, when they're in that state, are like animals, you know, and they lock horns and that's yeah. it, they lock horns. And once you're there, it is then incredibly difficult to get out. It is, but you are still responsible for this. Of and so if this is your responsibility. It's also your, it's time for you to make those corrections, those changes, walk that pattern. I think the best advice I ever received on this path is do not speak when you're angry. Yeah. Because I have a vicious mouth when I want to, I can, I can cut you to the core.
or I've always been intuitive. So you don't think that I couldn't use that to my advantage and find the core of an issue on you and then just bring it to light. Of course I could, but I realized then I was doing a lot of damage control. Then I realized that maybe the point that I was trying to make and the whole purpose of this was because of what was done to me is now negated because of the things that came out of my mouth. Yes. And so what I've learned, my step one, do what? Sorry, um, no. you can't claim that anymore then, can you? Because if you go and do what you feel like doing and the damage yeah. starts to occur, it's almost like it takes away any possibility of saying, I felt hurt, I felt upset, right. blah, blah, blah. Because people can't... aren't hearing that I felt hurt anymore. They're hearing the chaotic energy you just they threw at, just them. Throw back at them. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, that's been, you know, that is one of the biggest pieces of advice that I have taken to heart, which is just until you can reach a safe space inside of yourself. And by safe space, I mean, you're not thinking the vicious thoughts. You're not feeling the vicious thoughts because it is a, for me, it's a physical. And that can be like a physical. actual. Yeah. Yeah. And and just, you know, it's better to, at the end of the day, 99% of the time, it is not worth the fight. Mm -hmm. As soon as you dissipate, you can revisit it. And it's funny because most of the time when you revisit it, you realize that that wasn't worth your time at all. And, and I know that takes work because being an overthinker, like you are, we both will mold this over forever and feel all of these feelings and la, la, la. But if you get yourself worked up into the point of anger, where, you know, your response system inside of anger, be it physical, emotional, um, manipulation or gaslighting, or just saying just terrible things that you can, Um, yeah, because words are spells. And when you can stop and say, I recognize this in myself, i.e. I walked through the shadow aspect of the gene key, right? I'm now on the lighter side. I've now learned through walking that shadow side that that is not where I want to return. And because I now have the wisdom, because I did the work, I can now see why I can't give in to every, you know, trigger or every like, you know, it captivates me. Yeah. Yeah. Everything that captivates that part of your mind, everything that captivates that reptilian, that basic survival, that, that, you know, that negates this beautiful frontal lobe that we've, you know, we've established over centuries of time. And, and, and once you reach that point, you don't want to go back to that person, even when it's tempting, it tastes, it sounds like the most tempting thing that you could possibly put your mouth on. Don't do it because that quick payoff, it only lasts a split second. Yeah. It's a high that's not worth it because it's not worth what you were just talking about. What was this uh, cost versus reward, right? Like the cost of what you just said or did was not worth worth that 30 minute or less reward you received. No, unless you, unless you're somebody that just thrives on that stuff. But I think what um, is a word that always helps me in these moments is what's my intention So what's my intention always for the relationships I have, how I want to get on at work or how things are at home or with the kids is that um, I think when you can feel things on that level of intensity is because you've been the one on the end of that at some point. Yeah, yeah. When you've been, you know, when I'm going back to experiences as a kid and, and I know that we've taught and it relates to some of the experiences you've had as a kid that when you've been at the uh the end of somebody else's wrath Mm -hmm. the the devastating impact that that has never leaves you completely so even in moments where I have felt the come out of this sort of humane part of me Mm -hmm. into the crazy sort of part of me that feels those feelings really fully I was also aware because by that stage I've done enough psychology sort of training to um understand that this was this was old stuff and this was this was old anger at those situations at that person when that originally was happening and what was being tapped to was similar behaviors that were triggering me that would activate these feelings 
but my intention was not to leave a war zone, you know, where everything was decimated. My intention- Decimated because we are bombs that can go off and decimate yes. everything around us. Yeah. Yeah. And so often people are worried about real bombs and threats out there. The threats are what, what is contained within us. Mm -hmm. So, and I think the reason I like, and I like lots of different theories that I've discovered over the years. And there's something that's been helpful to me in some way. But the reason I like the gene keys is because it talks about that very notion that that gives the it gives the polarized aspect that we contained within us is dark and light and the shadow is that experience of feeling this thing fully right. and not being ashamed of it and not feeling guilty and it's feeling it fully and taking responsibility for it when you take responsibility for it then you can start carving your path out in a way and then yeah. deciding if you've not seen anything different before just deciding that you just don't want to be that person so you're not going to like you say you're not going to take yourself off because if you do do those things, the trail of destruction that we can leave behind us can be just too much. You know, you, you've just ruined so many relationships. Right. You, it's hard to clean up decimation. Yeah. You, 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 and even if some people are going to come back and give you a, a second chance, you know, you've totally uh, shifted the realm of that relationship because right. power dynamic is so strong yeah. Because really, we shouldn't we we shouldn't have to operate in ways that really are so frightening to people that they'll end up listening to us. Yeah, that that doesn't sound like a leader to me. That just sounds like a like a dictatorship inside of your yeah. your arena, right? That's a risk. And, it, yeah, it, and this is the thing. This is this is what these theories sort of teach us: is the risk is it's a, in, contained within all of us, and mm -hmm. sometimes we seek to oppress it and. Uh, not give voice to these aspects of ourselves because we're frightened of the destruction that we're capable of. Right. You know? And, yeah. and I, I hear that a lot though. I do, especially, you know, with these newly awakened, this, this goes to that love and light, right? Realm, right. Where there's no darkness, it's all love and light, but we are whole beings and we are the monsters hiding under our bed, you know, and we are quite capable of these. And one of the ways I learned this was, you know, understanding peacefulness is knowing that you have the capability of great destruction and harm yes. and you choose to walk the peaceful path harmless is not being able to to do any of that right and then you become just another victim to and so when i i realize that i can choose peaceful and every in every resolution and every path that I'm taking, it changes the perspective of what you're doing. And you know, we are both dark and light. And I like that the gene keys does the you know the the light aspect and the shadow because human design they call it the self and not self theme. Yeah. And so you're either walking inside of your your self directed theme or you're going outside of what your theme is. And our theme is peace, love, joy, yeah. hands down. It's not anger, you know, reactiveness, and you know whatever type of thing that we decide to come out from that. And it's important for us to recognize that it is okay for you to have these thoughts right? We all are capable of quite dark, dark things and thoughts. Okay. And then to say to those thoughts, but I choose not to. Yeah. You and allow that. Right. Yeah. Um, let that go. Yeah. Yeah. Because we deserve to have, it's okay to have the thought it's the action yeah. behind it's the action after that thought that makes the difference. Yeah. We all have negative thought patterns. We all think, Oh my God, that chick shouldn't be wearing that. Or she shouldn't be singing or he needs to whatever, whatever, but it's how we, we then soothe that thought and come out with the action beyond that. That's really what's important. So it's okay to have the dark thoughts. It's okay to think the not self themes. It's okay for you to work through, walk through the shadow to get to that light every time because it's practice. And pretty soon that practice is going to turn into a commitment. And that commitment is now a natural and you're now mastering this emotional zone that once took advantage of you. Yeah. So we sort of in, in psychology more recently, it's become more uh, uh, known about, it's called emotional regulation, basically. So yeah. um, it's harder to emotionally regulate when it's rage that you're dealing with 
and often that rage is much deeper uh, so much deeper than a lot of us even acknowledge we think it's that moment or maybe it's because of this the series of moments but we don't bother to look back to that childhood moment right that yeah Yeah. and usually it's something very powerful that's happened at that point Mm -hmm. that then is repressed and it's a whole series it's usually a whole series of things. It's not yeah. usually just one thing. It's this consistent, uh, you know, defending of the self or whatever. So that's that process that, that's going on and we can all get to that. And it's acknowledging that we all have those capabilities of, of total decimation and destruction, which are powerful words, but I wanted to use words that reflect the level of powerful state that we can experience. Mm -hmm. And I think the difference is like where we've had conversations is I may well have felt like that as a child, say an eight year old. And then as a teenager, at that point in your life, you can feel like you're going totally out of control. Mm -hmm. The difference is now with the journey that we're on is we've uh, we are aware that we felt these states before and that we uh, it dissipated. And with the shift in thought patterns and a choice of. I would choose to live my life more comfortably, peacefully, more with more satisfaction, whatever that is. That goal, we can aim towards it, even if we only experience it for a few minutes. Um, because at some stage, all of that stuff will erupt and we will feel these eruptions until we are, because in a way, it will surpass the mind at some stage. And this is what we're finding out about some of the yoga philosophy and some of the research is all of this stuff that's contained within our system needs to be p- released just as much as other things that were. Yeah. How else are you going to clear it. space? Yeah. And yeah. that was the sort of beautiful moment that we were leading into when we spoke earlier that I wanted, because uh, we, t- we have talked about trauma, we've talked about shadow, we've talked about this difficult side of being human because this is the reality of life no matter yeah. what's going on in life. Yeah. But also what I think is sort of not emphasised enough is that if you allow yourself to trust your senses and what's going on for you and start to make sense of that and start to allow yourself to experience that without judging it without feeling shameful of just allowing that process and if you need to talk to someone and I think your point exactly is when you're at that heightened state you remove yourself so that the the state starts to dissipate but we will once we've been shut out the cannon cannon or in uh, erupted like a volcano whatever that metaphor is for that experience then lands now the interesting thing is is when we land and we've done a lot of the work or we've done enough in that moment a lot of people we land but we don't recognize the space we're in now right that can be quite disconcerting it is it's almost um more confusing than being shot out of the cannon because yeah. now you're in new footing and it doesn't feel the same that it did. Yeah. And, and you look around you and the environment doesn't even look the same. It's like, did you put me into a new reality? Did, did yeah. I, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And so it's just, um, when you walk into this new path and it's so unfamiliar and everything around you is new. And I am, I'm speaking from a place of, I've been through this a few times, the new ground, and I'm actually inside of new ground. As we're talking today, this is brand new ground for me. I'm in a new space, new environment. I still feel a little confused, a little disoriented, Yeah, but because I know that I've been through this transition before, And that the only way I got into this transition was by learning a lesson, then this new footing becomes less scary because I know from hindsight rule that I've done this before and I was a better person coming out of it when I hit the ground because now, because I've done it a few times. And so this time I still feel a little disoriented. I'm still in a little, like, I'm not in full clarity yet. But because I know I've been through this transition, not maybe this exact one, but through this style of transition before, that where I landed is far better than where I started from. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
And, and I think that's a key point that you make. So for anyone, if they've either not monitored it and noticed it before, they might have just been used to several disruptions and back to familiar patterns and, and conditioning. When you go through a process and you can find yourself using language like that, which is I, you're using confused. I, I used to uh, start saying I don't know. And yeah, IDK is a big thing too. I'm unsure. I I'm don't sure. know. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, and then I and then I'd sit back and it's like, what's that about? And that's because I didn't know. Because you only know most of the time. Uh, we only make reference points towards anything we experienced up until a minute ago. Exactly. So we only know what we knew. Yeah. So when we're in a new ground, it is literally like say. I don't know, you've been in a plane and you're flying over different countries, yeah. over different landscapes, and you jump out of the plane or you're pushed out of the plane, whatever the, the choice is at that stage. <laughs> or you Depends on what you need out. from your guides, I guess. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so then you land. And if you've, uh, I, I used to talk to kids about this, that if you, are, if you grow up in a city and you do the same thing every day and that's where the corner shop is that's where school is that's where your par how your parents do things and then you get on a bus and ride out of town and you go to this brand new environment that's a farm and it's got animals and you've never seen them before it can be both a joy and and fear at the same time yeah because you don't know those animals how they're going to react are these nice animals are these bitey animals yeah, so you can't, why do yeah. they smell like this you know you've, you've got all these sensory overloads that now will begin to happen because you're not used to the experience and so yeah. this goes back to that self-care you know this is as you're integrating this new experience this new lesson that just came out and you're walking this new take care of yourself. This beyond anything else is the moment of clarity that says you are integrating what you just learned. Be patient, be kind and thoughtful to yourself and well-being because it is unfamiliar territory and we need moments to, to yeah. take that in. We need a moment yeah. to allow that to wash through us and say, this is now my experience. Yeah, and that is exactly the key point because what we can end up doing, if we're confused and unsure, we can end up reaching out for the same hooks mm -hmm. that sort of led up to the, the experience, even if it's not as bad, because it's a way of either it's a lifeline and we don't feel on solid ground, we're a bit anxious generally anyway. And so if you land in what I used to call no man's land, Mm -hmm. it had no name it had no features it had there was nothing I hadn't gone transitioned from the town to the farm I just transitioned into this massive space and I remember having my first experience it was when we were doing the philosophy part of the course mm -hmm. of everything that we had taken for granted was questioned absolutely everything everything we thought believed the history, everything. And when you go through that process of, you know, it really is like a 365 degree turn. So I'd landed in this no man's land and initially was disconcerted. And initially it's like, oh my God, what's happening? Because we don't, we, we can't make sense of the feelings and the experiences we're having. And now exactly your point. Sometimes you have to allow yourself the uninterrupted space if possible and if you're going to work and you're still dealing with the kids and all that's that, still uninterrupted space it. for your self-healing but but stay there and don't fill it with anything right. don't look don't and I don't know for some people it's a day for some it's a few weeks for some it's a few months mm -hmm. especially if you've been really ill for example if part of that transition has involved a major illness mm -hmm. then you do need a few months because what we're talking about is we're healing uh, from what's erupted and our bodies as because it's an intense experience you can get really tired you might want to eat more you might not want to eat you might want it and it is really gentle self-care but if you put the time in because you're not even putting anything in it's just not doing if right. you don't do, and you don't put anything in your calendar and you support yourself what you'll start to find at some point is the you move out of a making life happen and a frenetic state 
into a natural orientated state of you do what you do in any way in your life that you have to do to cover your responsibilities but everything around that really you will either shift your perspective of those things that maybe before irritated you or you keep doing what you're doing but you start to you start to really notice the much smaller elements that fill you up that make you feel good or even inspiration now inspiration comes Mm. from nothing you don't know it's going to come you don't know what corner it's going to turn around but when you sit and you're in that state and you relax and you allow your body to heal and those things to take place those little ideas those things that are going to take you down uh, a road your higher path and higher path in, in sort of spiritual terms and psychology terms is just really about the path that means you're functioning at an even better level than what you are now. The path of least resistance is the goal, right? When you're not in your own way, when you don't consistently think that you need to, to control every aspect of the, the experience, when you realize for just a split moment that this experience is happening with or without you, yeah. it is a profound moment to realize that you aren't in, as in control as you believe yourself to be. And if the more you allow that to flow, the more details you pay attention to that you say, this is feeling, this is not feeling, I can release that, but I want to put more effort into that. And you're right. It really took this strong release for me this past week to um, get to this place of inspiration again. And although I didn't know that that was the key, how would I know? That's not part of what I'm supposed well, to you know. Can't look, yeah, you yeah. Can't that's look the, I, that would be me skipping the journey, right? And I'm on a journey look. right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You land there, and you just experience what you're experiencing. What you're experiencing disorientation and your confusion and your tiredness and fatigue and you experience that because the moment you start expect thinking something else you start to place expectations mm-hmm. you start to in a way trying to take control of the path again and yeah. and actually who knows it if you then approach it from the curious child like what the Richard Rudder said in that gene thing is if you sit there and you look around and you go, well, this is an interesting space. I don't recognize this. I've not been here before. I wonder. And then you start to think about, because like you said last time, words are really powerful. And you start to use language like, I wonder what interesting things will come in my direction. Yeah. I wonder what's going to inspire me. I wonder what pe- what interesting people are coming into contact with and I remember starting to do this because I thought they were the things I wanted to explore yeah. I wanted to meet more interesting people yeah I wanted to be ignited and inspired and when I touched that approach this morning I decided to go for coffee there's a couple of it, it's a bit like a warehouse state there's a really big shop and it sells all house stuff like plates and bath mats and all of that in the, when I was coming out of the coffee place, which I'd planned to go to for the walk, I was then inspired. I thought, I wonder if they've got, because I've got tomato plants, and I thought, I wonder if they've got these sticks to hold up the plant because it's getting bigger now. It's only around the corner. I'll, I'll pop in there. When I went in there, I didn't realise that right at the back of the store, they've got a really big area where they've got all these plants. And I thought, wow, I didn't even realise this is on my doorstep. And I've got all these uh beautiful plants that I can mill around and you know enjoy the different sites and I can uh take it all in and so it, in that moment was that was now an unexpected part of the journey and I started to drink in them because I was in the state of curiosity I was drinking in there were so many beautiful plants and then I told you earlier, I found an art section and I was thinking about my granddaughter and what would be like if we were playing paints and doing handprints and things like that. And I went into this totally unplanned zone and it was just a really nice experience and seeing all these plants because it was from a place of this is where I'm at, this this is where I've landed. I have no idea, apart from the tasks on my list, 
I've thought I've, I've got to do with work and even some of that's precarious because it changes every day mm-hmm. you know it's gonna it's going in the left direction then it turns to the right then it goes to the left and I've learned to ride that much better mm-hmm. and I don't I don't struggle with the frustration that I might have done years ago because it's like this happens on a Monday and that happens on a Wednesday and it could be quite rigid. You took away the regimented schedule the reg- and realized that sometimes life happens and yeah. we're just going to flow with that. Yeah. And initially, yeah. actually, when I was applying new tools and techniques to c- start creating the life that I wanted, I did create a framework that was kind of regimented because it worked at that time. And what has now started to happen is that I don't need that level of regimented approach. I am able to do work and approach things in much more flow. And that's what happens when you trust the process and you find yourself landing there, which I think is what you're starting to experience. Mm-hmm. You sit If you sit there like as a curious child and, and you don't project, because one of the dangers is you go, you know, so you come into contact with somebody else and they imagine that everyone else is going to be like everyone else you've experienced or your trip is going to be exactly like what you've experienced. If you open your eyes up and just uh, have some wonder about, well, yeah. this is fascinating. And then be really like gracious and, and appreciative that you've learned all those things that you did and dissipated what you needed to have dissipated. Right. So that you can really experience the glory of the freedom like what's talked about the gene key and the release that comes from that is is really quite exhilarating and for for me as a child that didn't wasn't familiar with words like joy ecstasy and exhilaration and excitement right when I feel it I feel it fully now yeah but I'm still mindful of the fact that I'm observing this experience while experiencing it in utter joy Well, and you're bringing up a really good point about being the observer, you know, as you're integrating these things now being the observer is, is a, a good place to be most of the time anyway, right? The observer, the one that's the the childlike wonder, but just instead of, you know, being demanding that you have your fingers in it, you just, whoa, you know, like what's that and being curious in that way, you know, being the observer pays off highly in your integration process. And the reason why is because instead of being involved in this newness that you're still inexperienced in, right? You're in a brand new state of mind. You're in a brand new place. And although there's some familiar things, it's still brand new for where you've been. Becoming the observer while you allow this lesson to integrate or to fully come into focus or understanding is key above all else. And part of that is really allowing that childlike spirit of, of curiosity and wonder to step in yeah. so that you can then present this observation in a, in a way of like a child going to an aquarium, right? The child goes to the aquarium and they're like, oh, wow, whoa, you really can't touch anything in the aquarium. You can just observe it, right? And you can just take it in and allow it to come in and, and see what it's like and, you know, feel it in a different way. And when you're in this new zone where you just went through the lesson, you just went through all of these things that you're learning and you come to that landing zone, you're like, whoa, this is new. I might need to take some things in for a minute, become the observer, allow it to integrate inside of you. And then depending on the time frame it takes yeah. for you, when you come out of it, you're going to be like, I'm grateful. I took that opportunity to integrate and observe because I know even more now than I would have, if I hit the ground running. Yeah. 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 It, it's, um, it can be a tricky one for people to wrap their head around because we're so used to moving from one thing to the next, but it's almost like the analogy of, you know, uh, as though you've actually been living in the same house for a few years and you've decided to leave all the goods in that house and move to a new house, a new state and walk around the rooms with utter curiosity as to, do you want to fill those spaces straight away or do you want to live in the house for a few weeks and as you've got your basics you've got a kettle and a toaster and a, I don't know a microwave and a cooker or whatever and you can do the basics but do you want to fill it with anything else while you're still discovering 
right what colors you want to use what patterns what material what you've got access to do you want to walk around the neighborhood and get inspiration and when I was in the garden center this morning they had those beautiful water features and I thought and I was looking at a few things and I thought I wonder what I can place in my garden that again ramps up this experience that I have that that enables me to feel the peace and the satisfaction more and more of the time what can I put around me that will uh, allow me to immerse myself in these feelings more fully on a more full-time basis yeah. not just because I meditated for five minutes and I felt great or not just because I ate a beautiful pizza or not just because you know I've had a moment of watching tv how can I utilize those external things to help me elicit the internal state yeah harnessing the internal state beautiful business yeah absolutely absolutely and it's it I love that that's great yeah because there is beauty in everything and in every even in the trying the most trying of times there is a level of beauty that sits beneath that surface that if you just give yourself the moment of pause you might be able to see that yeah definitely i think um I, I think it's something to revisit again and, and look at this from sort of different aspects because um, what I find is it's through repetition and through a continual revisiting of these kind of things that help us build up the um, resilience and the armour that we need sometimes to survive what can seem like a crazy world and if there was ever a time to use the word, word crazy in the context of our external environment for a lot of people it really is and it is there is a lot of fear yeah um in in all forms coming at you and part of you know talking about this free being or this sovereign being i actually look because i had forgotten that another deck of cards had called me just off the cusp and a card didn't fall out of that one. I actually kind of went to shuffle it and it flipped a little bit and like hung out. So I knew that was the card and it was sovereignty. And so you brought up sovereignty. So that's what brings me to that is, you know, part of being a sovereign being, it, which is, you know, just a free being is being free from the conditioning of fear and not allowing the things that they tell you you should be fearful of mm. to actually make you fearful because you get to decide what makes you fearful and what doesn't what fears do you have and if other people telling you what should be fearful is the thing that you're attaching to then you need to go inside and start examining the reasons why what lacks what 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 where we're at that's allowing this to seep inside of our system because as we noticed in the pandemic, we kind of had a couple of different people, like sets of people. We had the ones that just allowed that to encompass their entire existence in fear. Mm -hmm. The people that said, I'm still unsure. And so I'm going to follow the set of rules that are being laid out for us out of respect and also because I'm unsure still. And then you had the people that were like, I have no fear. This is, this is just a, this is ludicrous, la, la, la. And then just did whatever that their daily thing was consistently without the concern of others. And so, you know, when we have to walk the path that we're walking, which every person is walking a path, regardless if they're aware of, of it or not, when you're walking this path, one of your most divine gifts is sovereignty yeah. and that sovereignty is so sacred and so profound that once you get a taste of it you just want to keep following that line because that line tells you i am free from fear i am free from people conditioning me i am free from my own mind's terror zones i am allowed to walk this path peacefully inside of my freedom in my true yeah days of who I would have been because when sometimes people talk about sovereignty or truth what that just means is 
the me that I would have been, which is more of who I am now, mm -hmm. before I was conditioned as a child, before yeah. I shut down because yeah. I was scared, because before I avoided certain things because of the alcoholism, the, the drug abuse and everything that I saw around me. All of these things that place these layers of conditions mm -hmm. block the light. And that's when I, somebody described this to me a while ago, that we're always love. But what gets in the way of that is just all of these things. The love is always there. The sovereignty is love is there forever. You were yeah. you came you came from love. You leave and you go to love. Therefore, the tunnel of life that that path that you walk in between where you came from and where you're going to is also love. Yeah. So but while we're here, use the use the information that we have so that we can keep going back to ourselves. Yeah. And remain in that state no matter what is going on around us and even and if you slip out of that state be aware of self enough and do the work enough to get yourself back to that place exactly. right because we are quite capable of slipping this is the ups and downs the moment you begin to, and i don't mean like the moment it happens because you have to realize it the moment you realize it make the shift of the pattern to walk you back into the alignment of who you truly are and who you truly are is free who you truly are is joy who you truly are is love and if there's things that are taking you from those places it's time to find the pattern back to those things back to yourself. Yeah. and I think that's a beautiful note to end it on because I'm certainly feeling that and all of that is possible and it's possible for people to feel that more and more and more if they're feeling it for five minutes tomorrow they can feel it for 10 if they're feeling yeah. it for a day they can feel it for three days if they're feeling it consistently not only do they feel it but everybody else around them starts to feel it. And that's the beautiful aspect of this. Right. And if you use this growth discovery for yourself, the way that some people, okay. So they say like when you're exercising or going on a diet and you're like, I had this bad day, or I had these two bad days where I ate terrible or I didn't go work out, yeah. but then you expand that out to a month and you mark X's on every day of the calendar that you did what yeah. you were supposed to, it far outweighs the negative side, the part that you didn't do. So if you take that example and you use it in your growth, you will see that even when you backslide one or two steps, you're already far ahead of where you were. And the yeah. fact that you've even recognized that you're backsliding tells you that you are on the correct path to yeah. being a free being and sovereignty is a real good look on everybody. Well, that's absolutely brilliant. And I've so enjoyed um, us visiting this aspect of, and we're able to talk about it from that lived experience of uh, where we're at now so um let's finish this week's episode and yeah I look forward to the next one with you Danielle. me too thank you mel <laughs> <laughs>